I'm here to do the time and place book tag. This was created by Jen Campbell and I was also tagged by Jen. The idea of this tag is pretty simple. You choose 10 books that you really associate with a certain time and or place. The first book takes me way back. This was the first chapter book that I read on my own. I don't know if any of you guys know of or remember the Magic Tree House series, but I absolutely loved them and I'm pretty sure that my parents read some to me before I went and read some myself but the first one of those that I read by myself was Dolphins at Daybreak and I remember this not only because it was the first chapter book that I read but also because of the place that I was in which was Anakiwa which is a little place where there is an outward bound school in the Marlborough Sands, the top half of the South Island of New Zealand. I was reading this book and there was an earthquake and that was the first time that I remember experiencing an earthquake as well and it was quite quite a big earthquake, or at least it felt like that. I was quite young at the time. It was like this earth-shaking moment for me in my reading life. <laughs> I know that sounds dramatic, but it has a nice kind of um, symbolism to it, I think. The next books or collection of books were the Famous Five series by Enid Blyton, and I just remember reading these on holiday. I think for one of them in particular, we had an audiobook, which was great because my brother and I could sit in the back of the car and listen to this tape when we went on holidays with another family who also had two children and a dog. We could pretend to be the famous five. So good memories from that. The next book is Life of Pi by Jan Martel. This book I associate with dress rehearsals and the concerts of um, the musical production of Cats and I was playing in the band for this and during the breaks I would go and sit and read this book. I especially remember getting to the quite strange magical realism parts of it. I think that was my first experience with magical realism. Next up is Cloud Atlas which is one of my favourite books. I remember reading this because this was another family holiday and this was just about the point where I was learning to drive and the drive from my home to where we were going on holiday is over this hill and the hill looks like this. My dad really wanted me to drive but I really wanted to sit in the back and read my book. I am very fortunate in that I can read books in the back of a car even when the road looks like this. And I also then remember when we got there sitting out in the sun and reading this book. That was a good holiday. The next one is slightly less positive and this was when I was at university in my second year and I didn't have the best of flatting situations. It was one of those days where the dishes had just stacked up to such a point where I couldn't cope anymore, I just had to get out of the house. So I did that and I went and read The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath down on the Wellington waterfront. I will always associate that book with that particular place. So it wasn't the most positive books and it wasn't the most positive of days. Maybe I should have chosen a different book, I don't know. Another less than positive reading experience was when I decided to read One Day by David Nichols. I really did read this book at the right time, I think. I was going through quite a lot of emotional stuff and at the time I was trying to get through the luminaries but I was working three jobs and reading the luminaries when you've only got a few minutes each evening before you're just completely exhausted and want to fall asleep. That didn't really compute very well. In between I picked up one day because it kind of reflected how I was feeling in many ways. So it was really a comfort read. I didn't love it but it was kind of something that I could just zoom through quite easily and that was nice to not have to think about what I was reading. The next book is much more positive and it is The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. Ah. I read it on holiday in Tonga. This was the first Donna Tartt book that I read as well. So um, especially that middle section where they are in Vegas and it's very hot and you get that real sense of the, the oppressiveness of the heat. Um, that kind of went along quite well with being in 
quite a hot climate. I have good memories of sitting by the beach basically and reading this one and my mum saying Holly come snorkeling and me going no but I want to read I want to read I have to read. As far as I'm concerned that is what holidays are for. This next holiday was another one that was quite close to home over that same winding hill but I drove this time. But I have good memories of reading two books in particular while I was there. The first one was Daphne du Maurier's Rebecca and here is a picture of me reading said book and matching it to my outfit. The other one was The Bookshop Book by Jen Campbell and I remember reading about these sort of travelling bookshops in here and thinking ooh that would be a really good idea because where I was staying was quite um, quite isolated so if you were over there for a long period of time you might run out of things to read so I thought that maybe having a van and traveling across a lot of these little places in New Zealand because there are lots of places like this in New Zealand and yeah taking taking books to the people maybe that is something that I will do sometime later in my life but yeah good memories of reading this book on that trip the last two are audiobooks and uh, the first is the Song of Ice and Fire series which I kind of binge listened to. I listened to these as I was doing quite a, a big project. Um, it was a, a magazine layout and I was doing custom illustration and things. So for this particular issue I was listening to the Song of Ice and Fire series so I associate it with that. The final and most recent one is the book that I listened to on the aeroplane from New Zealand to the UK where I am now. It takes many many hours to get from one side of the world to the other and I had a stopover, albeit a brief one, in Singapore. While I was on the plane and during the stopover as well I was listening to The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. So it's another one where I will always associate that book with that trip. And it certainly did make the journey a lot more enjoyable. I also find that on planes my eyes always really dry out and I, I look in the mirror and suddenly my eyes are all bloodshot and awful so it's quite nice to be able to just put your headphones on and close your eyes and listen to a book rather than having to read um, where my eyes start going blurry on planes anyway or watch a film where you have to obviously keep your eyes open in that sense I found that audiobooks were quite good for long aeroplane trips. So there we have it, those are some books that I associate with certain times and places in my life. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested to know other people's stories. If you want to make this video, please do. Um, I shall tag some people in the description as well, but um, yeah, feel free to do this because it's quite fun and I think quite interesting as well. If you don't make videos or don't want to make a whole video on this, then let me know a specific book that you associate with a particular time and place. Thank you Jen for tagging me, thank you all very much for watching and I will hopefully see you next time. Bye!